Next, I would like to introduce uh, someone that many of you already know, uh, Sydney Coffin. Sydney Coffin uh, teaches at Thomas Edison High School in Philadelphia, uh, formerly at the University City uh, High School in Philadelphia. Uh, both of them are somewhat renowned or perhaps even notorious as high needs schools. Uh, University City to the point where <clears throat> it was just torn down, plowed under, and uh, something else will be built there. Uh, Sydney has been a five-time uh, TIP Seminar Fellow, um, a four-time National uh, Seminar Fellow, and uh, those of you who know him know that he is a, an unusual character. Uh, <laughs> I give you Sydney Coffin. <laughs> I was talking with my doctor the other day, and he explained to me that now that his kid, his daughter was of school age, he was leaving the city and moving to the suburbs where there would be better schools. And this concerned me a lot. I'm a teacher in those schools, and I've been working in the schools for 16 years. Um, in dis discussing the decision with him, he did not mention the dilapidation of the building because the school is well built and well maintained. He also didn't indicate any lack of resources because the school raises huge funds in parent donations. He didn't mention academic performance either because it is one of the rare blue ribbon schools in Philadelphia. Instead, what he highlighted was a lack of professionalism among the principal and the staff when he visited and toured the school. This uh, was a real problem for me because I had counseled him on going to that school. He'd lived in the neighborhood for several years and owned his own home. And I thought, here's a school that's really doing well by all intents and purposes. Um, and he doesn't want to send his kid there. You know, over on the other side of the city where I teach in a high school, um, I have 42 kids in my last period class. And six years ago, I was teaching at University City High School, which was, I think it was ranked one of the 23 most dangerous schools in the United States. Um, I taught there for eight years, and through the, uh, quote, Philadelphia years. And I really, really, really loved it there. I enjoyed my students, I loved my fellow teachers, and I loved the community, and it was, it was a real pleasure to be able to go to the University of Pennsylvania where I graduated from and attend the Teachers Institute, which I had heard about for a couple of years before I even finally made the step to just learn about it. And as a tipster, as a, as a fellow in the, in the local institute, I was brought into a cadre of teachers with whom I, I idolized, I should say, uh, these teachers, because they were doing something. They were making something themselves. They were creating curriculum. They were taking what knowledge they could learn from their professors at Penn, their seminar leaders, and they were making it into something that they could bring back to the classroom and they could share with these kids who I cared so much about. I don't have any kids of my own. Many of you know when I was here over the summer, one of them was killed uh, in a freak accident riding his bicycle. Uh, I lost another student a week later when I came back from Yale uh, to homicide. I lost another student in the first month of school. I've lost 15 students since I started teaching which is on average about one a year, and that's to homicide primarily. But I lose students every day because they go into classes and they either don't have a teacher or they have a teacher who doesn't exhibit the professionalism that I've come to know and love participating in the teacher's institutes. And, it, and it's something that is incredibly essential to being a teacher because when we meet with parents, when we meet with, with the kids every single day, day in, day out, 80% of our time is with the students. That professionalism is what we give them. We give them the sense that they are valid, that they are worth my attention, that learning is a lifelong process, that I myself have to take a day off from school to come and learn and speak. And this is, this is what I go back to my kids to on, on Monday or on, on Wednesday, since election day we don't have classes, is to tell them how important they are and that there are other teachers around the country who take the time to study over their summer vacations and take the time to do research even after they leave Yale. 
or even after they leave their classes at the University of Pennsylvania, that we go on Tuesday nights from 4.30 to 6.30. And often, I used to follow Herman Beavers out to his car, just still trying to learn something from him at the University of Pennsylvania, because we care, because we want to learn, because we are still learning and we still have something to give as teachers and as professionals. So thank you. Thank you.